Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Claudia Monticelli, the host of this podcast, Let's Talk Soul. Over the years, after having interviewed so many people on so many different topics, I realized that what interested my audience wasn't really the individual topics per se, but was how it impacted them, how it touched their soul. So I'll invite you all to lay back, put your feet up, and if you like what you hear, leave a review, five-star review. I'd appreciate that. So just enjoy your listening. Hello, hello, hello. Today I have with me Tracy Wittett. Say hello to our audience, Tracy. Hello, thanks for having me. Hi. (laughs) So let's see, what can I first tell you? She's calling from, she's calling, she's with us in, uh, from speaking from New Mexico. And who is Tracy? Well, Tracy Wittett has been on the, the spiritual path of life, her own spiritual path of life for many, many years, always striving to learn like many of us who are looking for a lifetime. When you take a soul journey, it's for life, right? And um, trying to understand her experiences, she's also come to a place of unique wholeness. And through a lot of inner work and um, taking full responsibility for her for her uh, responses, she has learned to receive self-love and realize she does not does know what is going on around her um yeah. tracy is an intuitive uh who has a unique gift to connect and mediate what the divine highest of high holiest of holy beings of light and all of the words that you can express to, you know to 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 talk about divine source um and uh, to understand how to share all of this with her clients. She offers transmosis healing, and we'll ask you about that right off the bat, uh, Tracy, which is a unique sacred energy clearing that assists people to remove what no longer serves them so that they can reach their full potential in life. Um, And of course, I'll list her website and her social media in the description of this episode. So... Tracy, Mm -hmm. let's start right off. Um, Transmosis healing. Where does the word come from? What's a nice girl like you doing with transmosis healing (laughs) in New Mexico? Are you originally from New Mexico? Oh, no, I'm I was born in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. So I'm from the East Coast originally, Northern Virginia. So was I. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to work for the State Department, so I went to Washington all the time. You know? Wow. Yeah, yeah, I worked for Xerox Corporation, definitely yeah. in the yeah. America. Well, it's um, a different uh, ball game out in New Mexico quite a bit. How long have you been there? Uh, seven years. April oh, not, 16, not, that long, not that long. <laughs> not that long. Not that long. So how did you get into transmosis healing? And then give us a definition. I mean, healing is healing, but transmosis healing? Yeah, it's uh, one day I was doing, I always worked in corporate America and on the side, I would do energy work. uh, How, how, how did you do energy work? There are all kinds of energy work. So Mm -hmm. I'm older. So like in the early um, Mm eighties, I used to go to a meditation class. We studied a course in miracles at a neighborhood woman in Northern Virginia, Mm -hmm. a neighborhood woman's um, home. And we studied a course in miracles and she suggested, Hey, why don't you take this Reiki class? Ah, Okay. um, That's where usually people start. They start with Reiki healing. I did Uh Reiki one. Mm -hmm. And, um, 10 years later, I still lived in Virginia. Mm -hmm. There was another woman where I lived in, this was in Prince William County. I was basically raised in Fairfax County. So way back in the boonies, to my opinion, Mm -hmm. was a woman teaching Reiki one and two. So I took it again. And then I realized I didn't really need to take it again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Then we moved to Colorado and I took Reiki three. Yeah be able to teach the class. So I took, yeah. you know, I taught the class a couple times. Yeah. And um now you're talking to a Reiki master. So I know uh, what you're talking about, but then you know you grow up mm-hmm. and you get to a different level of understanding about what 
energy really is and what healing energy could be. So let's get to, I'm bringing you, I want you to go to transmosis so badly, well, very quickly. Yeah. So I was living I'm in curious. Colorado. Mm -hmm. That's where I lived for the second third of my life, so uh -huh. to speak. Uh -huh. um, I was doing Reiki on a woman. Yeah. And I heard the word transmosis ah. and I had a whiteboard behind me. So I wrote right. it down because when you're in the zone, you might sure. forget. Kind of sure, thing. sure. And I asked everybody that could and would know mm -hmm. and nobody knew what it meant. And mm -hmm. so I kind of thought it was a um, spirit grammar, you know, it's just like, I didn't know. Spirit but, talk, soul talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so basically nobody knew what it meant. So I looked up trans, you know, like yeah. transformation, that kind of a thing. And then osmosis to try and yeah, figure sure. out what this Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read it because I don't talk like this, but I finally asked source, what is yeah, trans? Yeah. Okay. Because if I looked, uh, Tr Tracy, if I look up transmosis healing, you come up. Okay. Uh -huh. You're the only yeah. one that comes up. Go ahead. So it's kind of something that I've integrated. And so transmosis means an unconscious transfer and assimilation of higher energies to raise the recipient's energy to equal the source energy. Okay, so it, you know, translating that into my speak, that would mean um, a way to increase your vibrational rate, your soul vibrational rate. Is that correct? I think so. And it just clears out energetics that no longer serve you. So okay. if you had lower frequencies in your field, whether mm -hmm. or in your bodies, then obviously it would lower your frequency. Okay, so, so wait, every now and then I'll interject. Please, please forgive me. All right, when you talk of lower frequencies, that may translate, correct me if I'm wrong, into negative energies. So I know that energies live forever, right? Energy right? lives forever. So <laughs> yeah. In our ancestry, with our mother and father, Mm -hmm. with their mother and father, you know, they have, they've had many, many experiences that are unconscious to us. So this is unconscious for us. And we inherit energetics that don't serve us. We may act sure. in a certain sure. way, but we don't know why, whether it's, if you believe in past lives mm -hmm. or if it's from our origin, you know, our genetic code or our subconscious brain, our body. Okay. okay so we, wait, wait just a second. I'm going to stop you there a moment. So let's say that you and I agree that there are uh, past lives and every life, you know, we've incarnated in this life, we pass, and then we reincarnate into it. So let's take that as a, a point of a reference, frame of reference, so uh, sure. we can talk to each other. Now, uh, from that point, if you do uh, believe in that, you also believe that you have to take responsibility for your past lives decisions that you've made. So it's not just simply DNA passage. Right. Some of it right. is, and it, not all the time. And, right. you know, so so let's say there are, there's both of those things, okay? All right, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry I interrupted. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. And I don't know if we want to interpret that to be karma, cause and effect, things well, that we... Well, yeah. look, of course, uh, let's put it this way. When I work with my clients, I work with the, you know, I won't go into that, but then at the end, I said, okay, now I've cleared you and I'll give you some follow-up work. But clearly, tomorrow, if you take a gun, walk out the door, shoot somebody in the head, my work is, you know, null and void. And yeah. so that you can uh, equate that to a, a form of karma, you know, what goes in, what yeah. comes out. But it's more, well, I like to uh, describe it as taking responsibility for your own actions and your own decisions. You make a bad decision. Well, you're not going to, you know, you can win the lottery if you find the people who are pulling these little balls out of the bowl and they have magnets and they, you know, they know your number and you can do that whole scam and win. But um your actions prior to that would uh, create different reactions. And we can call that cam uh, karma for now. Yeah, sure. All right. Now let's go back to transmosis. So how did you develop that? Mm -hmm. um, I took so many energy work classes and the yeah. thing that was in common for me, no matter yeah. what energetic yeah. process it was, because I'll do anything to heal myself. Not that I am sure. broken, but yeah. I was just very interested in it. And I found that anything I did, yeah. What was in common for my consciousness and what came through me mm -hmm. soul wise 
is I share what I hear and I see. It, it, can you explain that, please? So there's a part of me that doesn't do the healing. There's mm-hmm. a part of me that is aligned with soul. Yeah. Source. Which soul? Your soul. Yeah. Yeah. But the soul, like all of it, like... So when I work with someone, Mm -hmm. what do you want to work on physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and Mm -hmm. they'll share. Mm -hmm. I will also tune in and use applied kinesiology or muscle testing to see Mm -hmm. what body it might be in, what system it might be in. um, Just kind of like take a... It's saying meaning what it, what body it might be in whatever is in that person's highest and greatest good in that moment, what they came for. So you're scanning what is, is that in the beginning? Is that what you're saying? Uh Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that true confession is that sometimes people would say, Oh, I don't know, just whatever source wants me to know. And Mm -hmm. it's like, but I want to give you exactly what is in your highest and greatest good. Mm -hmm. And, um, the the truth is the transparent part for me is that what if nothing comes through? I need something to go by. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it always comes through. Mm-hmm. And I don't do it. I'm the mediator. I share what I hear and I see what okay. is in their highest degree. Let's, let's it, instead of getting a little fuzzy, would you mind um using an example, not necessarily a client, but you can make up the example. So we know, let's say a person comes to you, what happens? We talk about what they want to work on, on all those levels. Uh I share a little bit about what I got that they want to work on. And it's somewhat like like the guides of hundred percent pure divine light, no matter what belief system you're in Uh listens. So that person may have an agenda. Yeah. I may have some guidelines. Yeah. But when we consecrate the session and call in hundred percent pure divine light. Yeah. We ask for the recipient's highest and greatest good. And then I ask to be shown Uh and then I share what comes through. Okay. Question. Yes. I'm a client of yours and you share what comes through. I don't like that. What I am. I'm not. Does that ever happen that a person listens and either they don't understand or they what, or, you know, some odd thing like that. That's not happened to me. Okay. Okay. So that means usually people it's, you know, our clients come to us usually from by word of mouth or, you know, something uh, like that. And so they are in some form of a fifth dimension already, and they are in tune with what you're about to say. Okay, go ahead. They're ready to receive. Uh huh. And, and I record the session so they right. don't have to be completely present. I mean, they can okay. be present to receive, uh-huh. but they can check out. They and can then be I relaxed. Mm-hmm. The session and share mm-hmm. what I hear and see. And it's not me that does it. It's the light. Okay, so so then let's say uh, usually how long does the session last? An hour. Okay, an hour. Max. And is there a follow up from that hour, or is that so a, we talk? A, mm-hmm. Yeah, we talk in the beginning, maybe fifteen minutes in the beginning. What do you yeah. want to work on? What I got, uh-huh. and then at the end, they're pretty um, elevated. Pretty okay. Okay, you use the word elevated. That means that they, in some way, there's a certain lightness. There is a certain spiritual uplifting that they have. Is that what is? Am I interpreting that right? Yes. Most people say they feel much lighter. Okay. Okay. Now, um, when? Um, all right. So, so what do they usually do then? Do you know? Do you have any kind of? Um, tapping of the your clients or do they keep in touch or do they come to you again after that for a reason or is it one-off is it a one-off session it's a one-off session i don't uh-huh. have people sign up for three in a row and that kind of a thing it depends uh-huh. on the person and what they want to work on i had a friend uh-huh. who uh-huh. had uh stage four cancer yes. i went and worked with her every week okay some people yeah come once every year yeah some people come every other week why would they come back do they feel like something stuck or uh, I'm just not feeling right or something is absolutely wrong you know I'm hitting my head I'm bumping my knee I fell I got into a card you know why do they come back one friend to become Mm -hmm. a friend a client comes back because of 
previous lifestyle choices that are yeah. no longer in his life for the last yeah. 20 years. Uh huh. He's still clearing up residual energetics. Okay. And you've seen this person twice, three times. How many so far, if you don't mind asking? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Let's say 15. Okay. Like so that. he's Not a regular often. client. In, and yep, yep. and in yep. that number of sessions in how, what kind of a time span do you remember? Maybe about a year. We're almost coming up to okay, a year. Okay. So, so that is quite a few sessions. He, he, but he is the one who decides. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me, what is the biggest result that you could see tangible result of, of this specific case? Okay. Um, I don't know. For example, he was in a, I'm, I'm making it up. Okay. He was in a yeah. bad relationship, an abusive relationship. Couldn't, couldn't leave the person and stayed and stayed and stayed. And then after 10 sessions, he felt the empowerment to stand on his own two feet and left that person, something like that. What is, is if you can remember anything tangible that he enacted or did, um, throughout the sessions. Well, I have a different client I'd rather share about. Okay, who go ahead. A remarkable result. Okay, go ahead. This, this poor business owner woman yeah. mom yeah. lost both of her children. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, six years apart. Same. Whatever. Oh, six after six years, another child passed. Yes. Oh dear. And two children. And mm. they both passed. Uh -huh. And you can imagine the heartache. Of course. Well, no, I can't imagine really. I mean, and just the mm -hmm. shutdown and yeah. just. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with her once. Mm -hmm. And her heart is so much more open and yeah. clear and better now. Okay. There was a healing that occurred for her. And Others that know her well mm -hmm. said, what is different? You're different. You're lighter. Her husband who loves her deeply and cares deeply for her could see the difference. Okay. So it's very difficult to talk about this subtle energy that right. is unique in every soul. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. And I would, I honestly complained one time I had a women's group and I'm like, well, if it's so great and so powerful, how come people don't come back? And my friend said, Tracy, you worked with me eight months ago and I am still integrating yeah, the yeah, sure. words sure. that came through. And it's not my words. Yeah, sure. sure. I, I want to say that it's not me that does it. And it's uh -huh. not even the guys that do okay. it. But, but, but life happens. Okay. Life happens and um, uh, anger flares and depression sets in a lot of these uh, types of um, emotions that can trigger uh, a sense of of um heaviness and that yep. that is what why people usually return because of what occurs you know uh, any kind of um negative um occurrence in their life this woman that wanted to come back because she received a um a person in the public that came into her place of business yeah and it was like really heavy dark energy and uh -huh. she was scared and yeah. felt like some kind of transmission happened of evilness or whatever yeah, yeah and i and she made an appointment and then i reminded her you know the light always prevails yeah you know okay. the dark so to speak is level nine to one it okay. never prevails up to ten well and so work is all about empowering someone else right but we are human we are. so so um it will not prevail if you are disempowered now that's the key, understanding yourself to know when you're disempowered. Like, for example, those emotions, depression, fear, anger, those will disempower you. And um, yeah. and that's what what happens when uh, dark entities show up from time to time on our doorsteps. Right. Um, right. Now, uh, let's look let's look at a couple of things. Um you uh, wrote to me and when I asked of different topics that you um, would, would be willing to and comfortable talking about, and you listed them here. Now, one of the, the topics, and this will morph into another topic, but uh, trusting yourself and the universe. 
Now, right. what is it about, what do you mean by trusting yourself, first off? Well, that's my, that was my issue. Uh -huh. uh, trust, yeah. trust others. I grew up in a functioning alcoholic family with parents uh -huh. and stuff. So I had that whole uh -huh. thing about not really trusting. Uh -huh. Through life experience, I began to trust myself when I focused on it. Uh -huh. Like I really had this belief as a low self-esteem person at the time yeah. that everybody else knew what they were doing and I didn't, uh -huh. and that I, I didn't fit in. I didn't belong. Mm -hmm. So I thought there was something wrong with me, but as time has gone by and I've cleared a lot, I've worked a lot, I've meditated uh -huh. a lot. I eat well, all those things. I came to this fulcrum point in my space of being yeah. where I realized, wait, nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> We're all trying to figure it out. Well, we've and got a life to figure it out. We've got a long life to figure it out. <laughs> it's mystery. It's a mystery. It's mysterious. Yeah, sure, sure. That's what's so, so interesting about it, actually. Yeah. And, and now I always thought, oh, you know, I can manifest. I'm in charge. Let me create. And then I'm like, why am I creating this? You know, if it yeah. was negative to myself or whatever, yeah, if yeah. I perceived it to be negative. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in relationship, not only with myself, I'm with, in relationship with the divine like the higher part of me and all the hundred percent pure divine light beings that exist. Yeah. But I'm now yeah. in relationship yeah. with yeah. the universe because I'm wondering about fate versus destiny. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm wondering about and free that. will and free all will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so we have free will, but does it always take us back to certain experiences in our life that we are designed to have? Okay. Now I'm getting into a sort of um, the, the, topic of this discussion, soul expression. First, I, I want to ask you, what do you mean by soul expression? What actually is soul expression to you, Tracy? It's like the essence of who and what we truly are. Yeah, we have a body. Yeah, we have a personality. We go through the life challenges, whether it's through family, work, Mm -hmm. friendships, you know, all of those things that help us grow. Yeah. But when you're in alignment with soul, yeah, yeah. I've okay. always wanted to express myself like who and what okay. I truly. Okay. So, so why I'm saying that and asking you to define that and distinguish it is because um, on YouTube, my followers, when I have a Q and a session or when I open up to channeling session, most of them ask, what is my soul's purpose? What is my soul's purpose? Okay. Now, I don't want to say anything more on that, but I'm wondering if your notion of soul uh, expression has something to do with a purpose of any kind or um, what a person is meant to be. I'm a talker. My gift, my divine gift is com oral communication, okay? Okay. Um, other people have uh, the gift of divine love or, you know, divine power or something like that. But in uh, this case, when you mean soul expression and soul purpose, can we equate that to be overlapping to some extent? Or what do you, um, how do you get people? Let's put it this way. Probably it'll be easier. How do you get people to express their soul? In the simplest form yeah. of soul expression, mm -hmm. it is to be yourself. It is to be okay. true to yourself. Okay. Now that's a big problem, right? Isn't it for so many people? Who am I? Where am I? What am I doing? Where am I going? You know, this uh, existential crisis that uh, befalls everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this, not only is it of a certain age group, everyone you know, because I work with people from 18 years old upwards and all of them have the same crisis uh, yep. in their lives or crises, actually. Um, now, I'm the, still your client and I'm coming to you. And I say, you know, um, Tracy, I, uh, I really believe that I was uh, an awakened soul, a spirit. I had spirit a spiritual awakening when I was very, very young, I started seeing spirits and I had uh, the opportunity to converse with them or seeing them, getting message from them, the messages from them. But of late, since 
and I'm making this up in part, okay? I'm saying to you, but since the pandemic, I noticed mm. that there's so much negative, um, negative, uh, what did you call it? Dark, dark energy or no? What did, how lower, did you, yeah, the list, lower you know. frequencies, lower frequencies yeah. have started uh, inhabiting my everyday life. What can I do to go back to what I feel I need to do? It's an inside job. Oh, oh, I love that. I love it. Say it again, slow. (laughs) Say it again, slow. (laughs) This work is an inside job. I love that. Go ahead. We can help others, support them, but it's an inside job to actually shift into the truth Uh of who and what you truly are. Uh And that's how you do your soul expression is Uh by being loving to yourself. If, and and I mean, for that, I mean, ask yourself questions. Yeah. Do Mm -hmm. I really want to do this? Do I really like this? And I'm speaking from experience because I had something where I thought I had to work in corporate America in order (laughs) to make a living (laughs) where I denied my, my creativity my love of energy work, I my know, love of I know, I know, level. I know, I know. I was a university, a a, a tenured university professor. Okay, oh. <laughs> so you people would die for that job, <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah, and um, I denied who I was. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, honest yeah. with myself. So it's yeah. really being in trust to know, and that you will be guided on the inner. Okay. That's where the action is. Okay. That's where the action is. And so then you tell me this and I say, huh, um, how long is it going to take? As long as it takes for you. I mean, I'm older now, so I can say this from experience. Yeah. But when I was in my thirties, forties or fifties, it's like, but, 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 you know, I want it now and this and that, but that's part of being born into who and what you truly are going through those processes. Okay. What is your experience Uh, on the average? Can you give me an average? I'm, I'm used to getting uh, quotations for prices, uh, home renovation and things. Can't you give me a, (laughs) a, a, an estimate of how many sessions it would take in your experience? What's an average? So I can't answer that. And the reason is that it's not up to me and it's not not up to the guides. What Uh I know and what I've learned through doing this work Uh is that it's the recipient, the one that is receiving a transmosis session. Yeah. It's that individual's consciousness that chooses what to heal, what not to heal, what to receive, what to reject, all of that. Okay. So let's, let's imagine you say this to me and I become... Um, convince. And I said, okay, okay, Tracy, let's start. I'll give you, you know, I'll not say doctor or Mrs. or whatever. I'll just call you Tracy. We did, we agree. <laughs> so I say, Tracy, what do I do first? Well, the session reconnects the person to their inner essence soul it's soul work okay so it's soul work Mm -hmm. just i'll take a step back and i'm going to ask you from a professional point of view do you have a set pattern or protocol that you follow or okay can you give me a little more information about that without you know spilling the beans totally Mm -hmm. sure i pretty much start every session Uh with i call in your guides of 100 very high level. There's no story. Mm -hmm. I call in your guides of hundred percent pure divine light. Okay. I call in my guides of hundred percent pure divine light. Okay. And we ask for your highest and greatest good to be done Mm -hmm. for yourself and for all concerned. Okay. I invite us both to place our egos and personalities Mm -hmm. outside of this consecrated space. Okay your highest and greatest good on all Uh levels, layers, timelines, and dimensions. All right. And then I begin the session and I'm guided how to start. Typically it's with the ancestors, mother, father, side of the family. 
Uh -huh. or one of the six bodies that we work in, or mm -hmm. one of the three systems that we work in. So okay. it's like okay. spiritual hygiene. Okay. We think of brushing our teeth, washing our face, okay. you know, all of that, but we don't think about the invisible bodies mm -hmm. and all the energetics. So what happens is as I share, it's kind of like when you were a child mm -hmm. and someone yeah. read you a story, there's a holy part of you. There's that part of you that can see and hear mm -hmm. what I'm describing. All and right. it's not anything, it's very simple, but yeah. I'll just share what I hear and see, what, what I'm impressed with. Mm -hmm. We record it. And the consciousness of the receiver interprets that information. And somehow there's alchemy in that, mm -hmm. that releases, mm -hmm. that expands whatever happens for the individual. So it's very sacred and it's difficult to put concrete terms to because uh -huh. it's and different for each and every person. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. So um, I'll take that, all right, as given. And of course, this would be a good time for me to mention where people could find you. So your website is tracywitted.com, T-R-A-C-E-Y. Witted is no periods, no dashes, no underscores. Tracy Witted. Witted is W-H-I-T-T-E-T.com. Calm, and then the social media. So yes. all this begs the question. Um, when or if you have put pen to paper and written about this system mm -hmm. of healing. Yeah. Uh, do you have a book? I don't see it here. I do. I oh. have a book. Oh, well, um, what is it called? called? The Magi Within. Sorry? The the Magi Within. The Magi Within. Okay. Because, ah, the okay. The, so you have a Facebook page called The Magi Within Book. Okay. All right. And what will I see if I open the index? What will, uh, what do you have? How did you separate into chapters or sections, parts? Alphabetic letters, A through Z. It's okay. a book designed, it's a workbook that a person yeah. would just open up or think of a letter. Uh -huh. Like if it was K, it would be kindness. Okay. Be with kindness all day. We ask questions. There's two other authors with myself. We wrote it in 2015. Okay. And if you go to the website, you can get it for free, but you'd have to print it out or just look at it on your computer as a PDF. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But it's available on Amazon. And it's it's my work is all about empowering people. Okay. Again, that self-responsibility thing. And you can have guides and you can have help and you can have support and we can clear mm -hmm. things out to help you get purer and mm -hmm. clearer so that you trust yourself and mm -hmm. that you can move forward in your life and really get in touch with your, as our book talks about, your inner magi, which is right. you know, mm -hmm. your intuition, a zero point, <laughs> awareness, bliss, creativity. Right. right. Um, and we have artwork that goes with it. So if okay. you look at the artwork, that activates you as well. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, yeah. What I want to know, the other two authors, is one of the authors an artist? The artist? How, how, yes. what are the, the Her name artist? is Vicky, Vicky yeah. Brown. Okay. She's an interior designer. Okay. And she's definitely an artist by trade. Okay. Like, she is an artist. And uh -huh. then the other is Sandra Lee Serio, mm -hmm. and she's a renowned astrologer. Okay. So it was the three wise women, not okay. the three wise men. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for all this interesting information. And I'm sure you'll find people coming to you after they've heard this. Um, thanks honored. again. And I hope to have you back someday. Yeah. Anytime. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.